First, the telecoms and aviation industries went in, went head to head in the United States this week over a technology that's constantly finding itself the subject of controversy, and that's 5G. Just as AT&T and Verizon began switching on their 5G masts across the country, major U.S. airlines warned of a catastrophe should the network interfere with uh, planes' ability to land. Uh, now, uh, Peter is going to talk us through all of this. Peter, AT&T and Verizon have agreed to postpone uh, the rollout of 5G near airports in the United States and over fears that flights were being disrupted. So what's the big deal? What, what, what was happening exactly? Yeah, so in the, in the end, there wasn't a ma massive amount of disruption at all. But with airlines, there's always an extra dose of cautiousness. So airplane mode, we always have to put it on when we go on, on onto airplanes, even though modern aircraft can very much deal with this low level of interference coming from smartphones. But now with the rollouts of 5G, these major airlines in the US are saying that the radio frequency of 5G is just too close to the radio frequency used by altimeters um, on board aircraft. These are what the aircraft uses to distinguish how far it is from the ground. So of course, if there's low visibility, there's gonna be a risk if they're interfered with because the pilot needs to know how far they are from the ground when they land. So that's why the airlines are saying, well, if there's interference, there could be a risk even to human life. But 5G has been rolled out uh, since 2019. Uh, it's the same technology. So how could it be more dangerous uh, depending on which airport you're flying to? Yeah, in lots of countries it's been rolled out, in do dozens of countries since 2019. Not in the United States though, but in France, you can use 5G right now, even if you're near an airport. And that's because Outside the US, the frequencies used by 5G are not as close to the frequencies used by these altimeters, so there's no risk of interference. And even then, there are extra safety measures in place. In France, the power supply to phone masts near airports is deliberately lowered. And in fact, since it started rolling out here, there's been no rise whatsoever in unsafe interference. But the whole thing has blown up into a political mess in the United States, despite the airlines actually knowing since the start of last year, which frequencies 5G for Horizon and AT&T would be being rolled out on. President Joe Biden even had to get involved, saying on Thursday that he's been pushing the telecoms companies for, to delay 5G for yet a third time so that airlines can get their equipment up to date. Now, Peter, America is already lagging behind when it comes to rolling out 5G. What might they say uh, be missing out on if they don't uh, speed up deployment? Well, they need to speed up if they want to be part of this vital new bit of infrastructure. At, at first, we sort of thought 5G sounded a bit like a buzzword, but really it's come into its own. It's a whole new generation of cellular connectivity. That's what the G stands for. It's generation. And a new one comes around roughly every 10 years or so. So 2G brought us SMS texting, 3G brought us mobile, mobile internet, 4G high definition mobile video, look at the impact something like TikTok has had. And now 5G, well, it's much faster and can, can connect to a whole a whole load of devices at once. So in some places, it's so powerful that it could even possibly replace Wi-Fi and cable internet in some homes and offices. And it's already supercharging the internet of things, enabling, enabling objects to interconnect with each other almost instantaneously, whether they be robots, self-driving cars, medical equipment, military equipment, things like that. So Peter, if a new G comes out every 10 years or so, do we have plans for a 6G yet? Yes, so we're not quite sure what it's gonna look like, but it's certainly in the pipeline. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga met with US President uh, Joe Biden last year, and they agreed to invest a joint four and a half billion dollars in 6G. So they're taking this seriously, and they're in a race against China. Earlier this month, a lab in Nanjing actually set the speed record for experimental 6G, reporting speeds of up to 20 times as fast, faster than uh, 5G. That's blazingly fast. Last week, China also announced that it plans to help set the international standard for 6G, which they'll do over the next few years. And uh, finally, uh, from you, international collaboration on telecoms hasn't exactly been easy, has it? Not at all. The former US President Donald Trump successfully campaigned to sideline Chinese companies like Huawei and ZTE from building 5G infrastructure in the United States, and many European companies followed suit. One issue remains, though, in terms of getting 5G really out into all the corners of a country, and that's cost. 
to achieve these fast, fast speeds and make 5G really worthwhile, you need far many more masts dotted around the country than you did with previous generations. And that's because 5G fundamentally has a bit of a weaker signal. So if we're relying on these main providers like Ericsson from Sweden or Nokia from Finland, well, that means that we're not hugely diversified and it's going to remain expensive. So enter a new innovation and it's called ORAN or Open Radio Access Networks. It's a kind of plug and play standard, which would allow almost anyone to build their own telecom equipment onto existing 5G infrastructure. If it takes off, well, I think it could be benefit beneficial for everyone. That's if you don't think that 5G is giving everyone coronavirus like a minor minority of people do. Mm.